One of the components of success with mechanization is having a good structured can uh, trellis system. And where you saw the planting was, this trellis system is, a, is going to be great for that particular site because the vines are going to be fairly vigorous and we have allowed for uh, me mechanization as well in the future. And I don't think we'll ever machine pick it, but the fact is that we can run a lot of mechanized equipment in there because we have very strong trellis. There's not a lot of give into these kind of trellises. If you spend the money up front, put in good stakes, good training rods, and uh, support your vines as best you can, you will have a life of good vineyard. And that's what you, we see here too. You're able to push with that Clemens up against that trellis and we're not pushing the trellis over. Again, it's a very stout trellis system. It takes a lot of energy to even move as much as I'm moving right now. So I suggest that anybody's putting in a vineyard Think about the 20, 25 years you got, and if we have to go towards more mechanization, even if it's machine picking, the stronger you start off, it's going to be money well spent down the road. One of the other advantages of having a well-structured trellis system is the fact that you have all this canopy up here, which on windy days act like a big sail. And what I mean by that, if we have our predominant afternoon winds here, and we have this big sail where the wind cannot really pass through, if you don't have an adequate trellis system, eventually you start to see them lean uh, away from the wind. Whereas this trellis system is perfectly straight up and down probably from the day it was put in. Uh, the canopy is well managed and we, they don't have to and we don't have to worry about leaning rows. And that is a really important thing because again, it costs money to come back in and have to retrofit a trellis system because either A, you didn't put the stakes in deep enough because you wanted to save a few pennies on an extra foot of, of the T-post or whatever line stakes you're using and perhaps using the pencil rods and not actually having that trellis system secure. <clears throat> wires that are adequately tight are good. Uh, you can see even these uh, VSP wires up here, these foliage catch wires are adequate to help keep the whole structure as a unit. You know, especially if we got some early rains, early deep penetrating rains and very windy conditions, this trellis system will still stand upright. And again, it's in good enough condition, in my opinion, that it will be conducive for machine harvesting, uh, the leafing machine, any of the mechanical type of uh, operations that have to put, rely on that trellis system to be effective. One of the main things that we always look at in these type of canopies or any kind of canopy is that one to one and a half leaf layers. And what I mean by that is that we want to have the primary leaf and maybe a half a leaf behind that for the optimum photosynthesis. If we have too dense of a canopy, we're not going to have that photosynthesis happening to help mature the fruit. In most of my vineyards, I like to use a T-post, especially what they call a 125, that's one and a quarter pounds per foot. Uh, these are nine plus foot of uh, T-post here. But the nice thing about them is you can adapt any kind of cross arm to them and put them at any particular height that you perhaps care for and to be able to adjust them where a lot of the highway stakes or the line stakes that have the predetermined notches every six inches, guess what? You're married to that. Whereas here we can bolt these on just about any height that we feel that's going to benefit the system if we need to move it up a couple inches during the, as the vines age, we can unbolt them, loosen them up and slide them up. It's one of the main reasons I like T-posts. Again, they have a spade down at the bottom in the ground to help minimize uh, the flexibility into the system, the shaking, if you will, where again, we can run that mechanical equipment. And you can see over here, we have a little different style of cross arm. It's a V because we've been doing a cross arm trial. And um, so uh, it helps with the whole canopy trying to get an open vase. I call it the open vase where the trellis actually comes up and it has a little opening, get a little bit of um, sunlight down through the center, but still create a little bit of a shade, shade area. Um, the other thing that is b uh, crucial and beneficial to a good vineyard is, uh, is using 3 8 rebar. Just, and you can get them in any length. And generally, all my trellis systems that we want, we put it 
into the soil approximately 18 inches from the, the height that we want. So for example, this is probably three and a half feet right here. So we have a foot and a half in the ground, again, for stability and for long-term uh, operations. Some people might only want to put them in a foot or less. And it's, that's all it is at the training rod. You might have to go buy a piece of bamboo or just tie a string down to the, to the bottom. But if you want a good trellis system that's going to withstand time and a lot of things that go on, you've got to start off. It's just like building a house. If you're going to have a house stand for a long time, you've got to start with a good foundation. Otherwise, you're always in the need for repair. Another key factor to a good trellis system is having a good end post assembly. I'm about six foot tall. It's four feet in the ground. They don't move unless you hit them directly with a tractor or a piece of equipment. But these rows are approximately a thousand feet long and we're using these posts and they have a double spade on the bottom. Again, the extra money and the most important thing is that we keep moving into the future and knowing that we have to dispose of all wood products, I don't think it's a great idea to be investing money in wood products such as uh, pressure treated end posts, pressure treated tomato steaks, and I've seen so many now uh, vineyards with a cedar end post and they seem to be constantly replacing them because they do rot. So again, I'm looking at the long-term investment, spend the money up front, get a good post. They even make them in three and a half inch diameter, which a lot of people are moving forward to. Uh, but these two and a half, seven eighths diameter posts are ideal for most vineyard operations. Again, it's not necessary to have the top of the post at the top of your T post for the end vine, but make sure they're anchored in the ground 10, 12 percent uh, backwards and should never have any problems. The reason we're using the spaghetti tube around the galvanized wire versus the non-galvanized post is because eventually you'll get electrolysis and that wire will rust through and break. Some people don't do that or maybe they'll just put some grease here but you know the grease only lasts for a little while where the spaghetti tube again extra effort is worth the time in the long haul. This wire is galvanized right here and it comes on round and as soon as it gets close to the metal post where it's not protected by the drip hose, it starts to oxidize and eventually this wire is going to break somewhere in here. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but at some point where it's not protected, we're going to have wire failure. It's not good to have that happen during the growing season, believe me.